Road to Doha, the tenth installment in an ongoing series on multilateral agreements related to climate change. Brought to you by iSciences. Kyoto and Beyond is a series on the evolving international climate treaty process that began with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Road to Doha is a summary of preparations for COP18, the 18th session of the Conference of the Parties to the UNFCCC, which will be held November 26 through December 7, 2012, in Doha, Qatar. This presentation will cover historical background, conference overview, multilateral process, issues and positions, and possible outcomes. The UNFCCC is an international climate treaty whose objective is to achieve stabilization of GHG concentrations in the atmosphere. The treaty was drafted in 1992 and convenes an annual conference of the parties to assess progress. The convention divides countries into three groups according to differing commitments. Annex I parties are developed countries required to reduce emissions. Annex II parties are developed countries required to provide financial resources. Non-annex parties are developing countries and are not bound to reduce emissions. COP3 produced the Kyoto Protocol, a legally binding addition that assigns national limits for GHG emissions. The KP regulates six GHGs. Emissions reductions targets vary by country, averaging 5% below 1990 levels. The U.S. did not ratify the KP. China and India are not bound by it. Canada has withdrawn, and Russia and Japan may not commit beyond 2012. Recent COPs have not engendered confidence in the ability of the multilateral process to improve the global emissions pathway in time or at scale. Both COP 15 and 16 failed to establish a new agreement that would follow the KP. The voluntary Copenhagen Accord established a two-degree target for capping global temperature increase. COP17 in Durban, South Africa, succeeded in proposing a second KP period. Most significantly, it created a roadmap for a post-KP treaty that will require commitments from developing as well as developed nations. The thorny details of this new leveling must be advanced in Doha. COP18 will be held November 26th through December 7th in Doha, Qatar. The conference will be hosted by Abdullah bin Hamad al President-Designate of COP18, and Christiana Figueres, Executive Secretary of the UNFCCC. al is Director of Qatar's Administrative Control and Transparency Authority. COP18's objectives are to finalize the extended KP, close the LCA, and begin articulating an all-inclusive new treaty from the directive of the Durban Platform. Hosting a climate conference in the heart of the oil-producing Gulf will test Qatar's leadership and commitment to the issues. Qatar has the highest per capita CO2 emissions in the world and COP18 President al has been in the energy industry for 30 years. Qatar could improve its climate leadership by making a mitigation pledge and persuading other Arab nations to pledge. The wealthy nation of Qatar is not lacking in resources to comfortably host COP18. The conference venue is Qatar National Convention Center, a gold LEED certified project. To raise environmental awareness, mosques will host lectures on the environment, energy, and climate change. 
The UNFCCC multilateral preparatory process for COP18 involves many interconnected UN bodies and working groups. The May 2012 Bonn Climate Change Conference was tense and unproductive, challenged by a heavy workload and bickering over procedural issues. Lack of progress necessitated an additional meeting to convene in Bangkok, presenting a financial challenge for UN resources. The informal additional session in Bangkok, though confusing at times, ultimately eased tensions from Bonn and put negotiations on track. The 12-day gathering at COP18 in Doha includes many working group and subsidiary body meetings. Ensuring a smooth transition to the KP second commitment period at this late date will be challenging. Countries will be encouraged to provisionally apply KP2 pending ratification. The duration of KP2 must be decided, most likely eight years ending in 2020. The hot air details of the second KP period, new emissions targets, and carryover of surplus carbon credits must also be resolved in Doha. To increase ambition, parties may be allowed to raise targets midway through KP2. Doha must also establish rules for carryover of surplus carbon credits and for access to flexibility mechanisms. The Durban Platform stipulates that the Ad Hoc Working Group on Long-Term Cooperative Action under the Convention be retired at COP18. Issues must be resolved or moved to permanent UN subsidiary bodies but there is disagreement over whether retirement is appropriate. Negotiators must begin the delicate task of defining how the Durban Platform vision of applicable to all will be actualized in a post-2020 treaty. Creative phrasing and graduated targets are being explored. Parties are also charged with increasing the level of ambition to close the gap between pledged cuts and targets recommended to keep warming to 2 degrees. This means increasing the number of pledging countries, increasing the target level of existing pledges, and recognizing other vehicles of ambition. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has called for global emissions cuts of 25 to 40 percent by 2020 to keep global temperature rise to 2 degrees. The likelihood of achieving this limit is increasingly remote. KP2 is shaping up to be a very rickety bridge to the proposed superhighway of a globally inclusive post-KP regime. UN climate negotiations will be influenced by economics, politics, and nature. Lessons learned from the Kyoto Protocol will instruct formation of the post-2020 treaty. Complementary coalitions will evolve and U.S. energy policy may move in a more climate-friendly direction. As always, nature will unleash its own incentives. Watch for future installments of iSciences Kyoto and Beyond series.